so my first slide is a still from uh, the video of the beating of uh, Rodney King by the LAPD in 1992. Um, this video was the impetus for the founding of my organization, Witness, uh, and it was shot by a plumber named George Holliday, who in many ways was way ahead of his time. Um, and by that I mean that now more than ever we're seeing ordinary citizens capture extraordinary events. Uh, there's 120 hours of video footage uploaded to YouTube alone uh, every minute. Um, and what's interesting is only a fraction of that is cat related. Um, often, uh, instead, it's a tornado in North Dakota or it's a war in Syria or Gaza. Um, and increasingly that footage is coming not from CNN but from people like George Holliday uh, who are in the wrong place at the right time. Um, and within this participation Pittori media sort of ecosystem, um, there are uh, a new crop of documenters and reporters and curators emerging, especially in humanitarian crises and breaking news contexts. Um, so as a human rights guy, um, I'm very excited to be a part of this Crisis Mappers uh, conference because it's here that we really understand the importance of harnessing this flood of citizen reporting. Um, so. Um, for these Ignite talks, we're supposed to have a big idea, a provocation. Um, so I want to build on some of the amazing work uh, that we've heard here that's similar to what, what we're working on and, and highlight maybe a little different aspect. Um, and, uh, and I think it all ties back to our theme this year, which is affected communities in the spotlight. Uh, so the question is, um, the, the, the provocation is that it's not enough to build great, well-tested, ground truth tools for us and our partners to use. Um, because the other question is, um, what about all those people who have never heard of crisis mapping? Um, and uh, to give an example, uh, over the last few years in Brazil and elsewhere, Witness uh, has been tracking and trying to stop uh, systemic campaigns of forced evictions. And in that work, uh, more often than not, um, our greatest asset is someone who resembles George Holliday uh, more than a seasoned activist or reporter. And that means that these are the tools that they're using uh, to message and share and capture. So how do we get all these functionalities and, and tools uh, that we want to use uh, available to those people? Um, so if you take a tool like Informacam, uh, which is a collaboration with the Amazing Guardian Project, um, to capture metadata, tags, uh, and context about who you are and who's around you and where you are, um, embed that in mobile media, um, you know, we're really interested in having a secure uh, and comprehensive version for activists and journalists, but we're also interested in seeing the functionalities that we're hearing about um, appear in those more general tools so people can use them. So imagine you have something important to share on your social media feed, you go to your privacy settings and you flip on proof mode. Or you have these functionalities in the standard operating system in your phone or camera. Um, you can imagine at scale what we can do to find the needle in the haystack. Um, or to recreate a scene of who was where. Um, and that makes for more safe and effective uh, citizen witnessing. Now with that come plenty of uh, ethical questions and design questions. Um, and uh, for example, it came out recently that uh, poachers in Southern Africa are trawling Instagram for photos and videos uh, from tourists on safari um, and using the geotags uh, to make it easier to find and kill animals. Um, so we have to answer lots of questions about how users opt in or out and how they understand what they're doing if we make these tools more complicated, uh, especially in human rights, uh, in, in humanitarian crises, and when we're dealing with vulnerable populations like rhinoceroses. Um, and we can't forget that these aren't public spaces. Um, all of these more general platforms. Uh, Ethan Zuckerman said uh, hosting your movement on YouTube is like having a protest in a shopping mall. Um, it's never going to work um, completely how we want it, but the, the prospect for better humanitarian response, better evidence, better advocacy, better reporting is very clear. So we're excited about developing tools like Informacam and also pushing for those functionalities to be adopted by larger companies. And there's precedent for this. We did this recently. Another Guardian project collaboration was Obscuracam, which does the opposite and strips out metadata and blurs images. And that app has had great success, but those functionalities got a lot more reach when YouTube agreed to adopt uh, facial blurring. Um, so my question for everyone in this room is how you all think about this dichotomy. When do you get straight to building and when do you make demands of tools that already exist? What functionalities do you want to see and what functionalities should be kept out of more general tools? 
Uh, so I'll leave you with George Holliday once again with a reminder that he didn't have a human rights documentation tool. Uh, he had a Sony camcorder, and affected communities uh, need a whole range of tools that match their knowledge and context if they're going to solve these challenges with us. So thank you. <laughs>